Out of all my years watching NASCAR, there will never be another driver like Tony Stewart. Tony Stewart was one of the most competitive race car drivers on the racetrack and off the racetrack. Tony Stewart knew when to use force and how much to use. The 2013 Fontana race saw Tony Stewart and Joe Logano get into it on a late restart. Joe Logano would push Stewart down in the grass and Tony Stewart was having none of it. After the race, which involved the wild finish where Kyle Busch took home the checkered flag, Tony Stewart confronted Logano on pit road. The two exchanged words and Tony Stewart attempted to get physical, shoving Logano before crew members stepped in to break up the fight. This incident became a significant talking point in NASCAR, not just for racing, but for the personalities involved. Tony Stewart's a three-time Cup Series champion and wasn't one to back down, even in the closing stages in his career. But young Joey Logano showed the aggression he had on the racetrack that would carry on for years to come. And boy, Tony Stewart is after Logano. Well, I did see some punches thrown today. You can't say they're just pushing each other. Not sure what went on between Stewart and Logano. Now, Stewart could have been reacting to the restart, where Logano came way down the track to block Tony. Tony, what angered you at the end of the race? What did you take issue with? What the hell do you think I was mad about? Dumb little runs us clear down to the infield. He wants to about everybody else, and he's the one that drives like a little I'm going to bust his ass. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Busher staying out, trapped a lot of cars, still one lap down, so only 19 cars in the lead lap. Big oh, contact, oh. the five into the wall, and around he goes. Got collected with the 11, and the caution comes yeah, back out. Suarez hit him on the right rear, the the left 99, rear. Yeah, 99 car right there, gets up the racetrack, gets into the left rear of the five, and then... He's just out of control, long for the ride. Denny Hamlin, wrong. Kyle Larson may be one of the greatest drivers in NASCAR or in the world right now, but his incompetence of driving in over his head is still one of the biggest detriments to his racing career. With still over 100 laps left in the race at Iowa this year, he decided to make a late, stupid move in the exit of the corner, putting him four wide and causing an accident, ruining his shot at winning when he easily had one of the best cars to win that night. The 2018 Daytona 500 was a significant race for both Bubba Wallace and Denny Hamlin as it featured one of those memorable moments in their racing career with each other. Bubba Wallace and Denny Hamlin got into each other coming to the line in the Daytona 500. Hamlin would shove Bubba Wallace all the way in the wall and Wallace was having none of it. After the race, tempers flared during cooldown lap. Both cars bumped again, which suggested lingering frustrations between the two drivers. In his post-race interview, Bubba Wallace appeared emotional about his incredible second-place finish, but the significance was hindered by Hamlin's arrogance on the racetrack. He was extremely upset at how Hamlin had raced him to close out the race. Hamlin, in his interview, downplayed the incident, saying it was just hard racing, and Daytona was one of the biggest races, so he had to go for it. Wait for I say anything stupid, but he might need to take some Adderall for that one. But um, all in all, a great day. For our uh, click and close Chevrolet Camaro Z01 team, just uh, an incredible experience for me to be able to um, to be here for my first. What do you see in here? Uh, he says I cut his tire down. Looks like the same movie pulled on Blaney at Martinsville. But um, hey, we edged him out, we beat him, so it's all good. Um, but hey, we're Daytona 500. And put that aside. Uh, my nerves are shot up right now. The king comes in all mad at me and says, after all I've told you, what was the first rule that I told you to do? And I'm like, I don't know, I lost my breath. And he says, don't wreck the car, and we... Wow, that was pretty gutsy. It's like a bullfighter. Tony about to run over the helmet. I'm sure he doesn't. You know, Michael, everybody thinks Michael's this good guy. He's not the good guy like he actually is. The caution was out, and he wrecked me. And he's a piece of shit. And we apologize for that language. Robbie Gordon is one of those hot-headed drivers in NASCAR that ever existed. Robbie Gordon was not scared for any fight, any confrontation, or anything to say in his post-race interview. And this was prevalent at Loudoun in 2005. He was wrecked by Michael Waltrip 
and chaos ensued after he got out of his car and in his post-race interview. After round one of qualifying, Suarez went looking for McDowell to have a conversation, and Michael McDowell went after him. Uh, punches were thrown. Crew chief attempting to break it up. Eventually, they did, and they had a conversation. What was said, Jamie? Well, I'm joined by Michael McDowell right now. You saw him. He had his helmet on, and it's almost like you knew that was coming. What happened on the track? Kyle Busch is easily the most polarizing driver in NASCAR still to this day. You either love him or you hate him. Especially when he wins, his haters love to boo him. But in an unprofessional-like manner, Kyle Busch would do the crybaby face as boos rained down during the 2018 Chicago Land Race. Kyle Busch, 48 career wins, and what a career it is already. The 2015 Cup Series champion. <laughs> Got to where we needed it right there at the end, and uh, was able to lead all those laps. And if it wasn't for lap traffic, it wouldn't even have been a race. I don't know what y'all are whining about, but. If you don't like that kind of racing, don't even watch. They're racing all the way to the end. Just like we said earlier, Joe Logano is one of the most aggressive drivers on the racetrack. He's never afraid to move you if you are in his way. But something he is definitely not afraid to do is to wreck you completely and not even give you a chance to have a shot at the win. This is exactly what he did to William Byron at Darlington in 2022. Logano would send it into turn three on Byron, shoving Byron all the way up into the wall in turn three damaging his race car and having Byron blow out a tire. Byron was so upset with Logano in his post-race interview, it made headlines. It's the last lap. Oh, he hit oh, 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 into the wall. Oh, oh, Logano oh, goes by. Wow. White flag. Do you one lap to go. Sponsored run? by Credit oh, One Bank. Oh, wow. No, I mean, we were really close off of two, and I think it spooked him and got him tight, and he was right against the wall, and I got the lead. And he's just an idiot. I mean, he, he does this stuff all the time. I've, I've seen it um, with other guys, and I mean, he drove in there 10 mile an hour too fast. Unfortunately for Juan Pablo Montoya, it would be that the detriment of his team that would hurt him in qualifying. Montoya would get the pole for the 2008 Kansas Fall Race, but he had illegal parts in his race car, and he ended up failing post-qualifying inspection. Montoya and the 42 team were docked points and had a monetary fine after this weekend. But also, unfortunately for Montoya, he couldn't keep his pole position as he would be sent to the back of the field. Seems like Joey Logano is coming up a lot in this video, and let's do one more. Joey Logano and Denny Hamlin get into each other at Bristol in 2013. Hamlin would spin Logano out, and after the race, Logano would go over to Hamlin's car and say that he's got one coming. But Denny Hamlin in his post-race interview nonchalantly basically said he didn't have any worry. But the following week, Joey Logano would intentionally crash Denny Hamlin on the final lap. Ironically, the same race that he got into an altercation with with Tony Stewart. But regardless, this crash ultimately injured Denny Hamlin, having Hamlin suffer a back injury. This was extremely uncalled for by Joey Logano. We are under caution at Bristol. Joey Logano brought out the caution flag and it was not pretty. Logano was battling Jeff Gordon for the lead. Gordon slipped up in turn two and Logano got right alongside him, but could go no further and coming off four, Logano jumps up in the groove right in front of Danny Hamlin and wait for it, wait for it. Pow. What did we say when we were watching this? If he doesn't move Jeff Gordon, somebody's gonna move him. Um, you know, it's just, uh, we finished bad, he finished bad. It's, uh, you know, it's even. What did he say inside the car? Uh, I see he was coming for me, so I usually don't see him, so it's usually not a factor. All right, thanks, Denny. Chris? Guys, on the back, side by side. Kyle Busch comes again. Watch out there in third place car, Kyle Busch. He's looking. Hey, Hamlin is ahead. They get it. They touch. They hey, touch. Hey, Hamlin's going to the ball. Hamlin spins down the racetrack, and Kyle Busch wins in California. I thought they'd be nice to each other. Tony Stewart was extremely upset with teammate Denny Hamlin during the 2007 Pepsi 400 at Daytona. Hamlin would get loose off the corner and slow down. Tony Stewart would get to the back of him, sending both of them hard into the wall. With only 15 laps into the day, tempers were boiling over in the 20 camp. Tony Stewart called out Denny Hamlin in his interview in the garage area, and even as teammates, Tony Stewart didn't hold back. 
He had no remorse for what he said for Denny Hamlin. He was so upset. Oh, Hamlin! Denny, teammates, Denny Hamlin and Tony Stewart. Stewart, who was going for his third straight win. Oh, and there's Pepsi still front. wreck, and there's Junior. It's what Kyle talked about on the pre-race show. There's one wreck, and then there's the follow-up wreck. And Junior is in it. Rick Sorensen also in it. And that's a perfect example of the wreck being at absolute at the front of the pack. And, the front end hurt much, so. and people behind them trying to avoid them running over each other. Well, as you can see, Stewart had no place to go. He had no time to even react. This guy's definitely contact there. They just, you know, he had a good run. You know, that's when you're making when you're making time up on a guy like that. You know, sometimes when you're coming up on him, especially in the corner, you'll get that guy loose. And Hamlin may have had to lift just a little bit because Stoney Stewart got him loose to begin with. But still, in the end result, he hit him. And, and you don't expect somebody to lift that late up off a corner either. Now, I'm, uh, I'm going to give Tony the benefit of the doubt on that one. Once you get out that far, you figure you got 15, 20 feet to catch it if it jumps out from under you. It's not going to go all the way to the top of the racetrack. Look how many cars are on pit road over here to the right. Car, what happened out there? Um, the 11 car decided to stop for some reason right in the middle of turn four. So uh, I'm sure he was getting tight because he had, for three laps in a row, we were catching through the center and the exit of the corner. and. Uh, all of a sudden, he just stops on the exit of four in front of 42 cars and I guess expects all of us to drive around him. So, uh, I don't know. Just tore up two really good race cars. He tried to crash us on Friday in practice and didn't get it done, so at least he finished it off today. Has there been some difficulty between the two of you? No, he just, I mean, he's a young guy and he wants to be successful, but uh, I, I don't know if he knows what the definition of team is right now. Kyle Larson drives in over his head again. Shocker, I know, right? and ends up taking out Ross Chastain as he was trying to battle for the win at Nashville. This was Chastain's best shot up until this point during the 2024 season to claim this first win of the season, and Larson took it away in a flash. I bet if Chastain could redo this moment, he would, and he'd probably start at the bottom. Ultimately, this was hurtful for Ross Chastain in the making the playoffs. A big push by the five, and up the racetrack, he catches the one, on. Chastain into the wall. Big contact, caution comes out again. Gabe Hart said, I only have one chance at a green-white checkered as we see Austin Dillon shoving the 43 of Eric Jones. Hard to tell from that angle, but from behind, it looked like the left front might have caught the apron, really shot the five up the racetrack. Take a look. He's in the back of the 11 right here. Gets on the apron, that's the splitter hitting the apron, and now it doesn't turn. We knew someone was gonna make it three wide. But behind them was three wide. But that right there, just Larson gets up the racetrack. They were, he was pushing, it looked like he was pushing Hamlin. Something sparked. he spark. just lost the front. Something sparks, Jeff. Watch the front of the five. Guys, the communication sometime is it. Oh, oh, there it is. It's Austin Hill and Zane Smith. It's gonna be more too, man. Wow. The big one. More and more trucks just keep piling in. There is nowhere to go now. And you can't even go through the grass because it'll just rip the splitter Whoa. off. Oh! Solder involved in that one as well. See the truck on the inside get hooked and shoved up. And I believe it's like the fourth truck so in I think that would have been yellow one that yeah. maybe got into the back end of the 16 of Hill. Hit the three, hit the third truck in line, and then it's just a, it's a push, push, push forward. And that's why you always have to know how much room. Wow. Jennifer Jill Cobb coming in there hot. But you always got to know how much room is in front of the truck. In Jennifer Jill Cobb is probably the one driver in NASCAR who needs very strong prescription glasses. You cannot prove to me that she did not know what she was doing during this horrible accident at Talladega. She was on the back of the pack and had enough time to slow down. But what does she do? She full on Tom Cruise's Days of Thunder it, full crawls into the wreck, but does not avoid it like he did. She plows into Parker Kligerman, ruining his day and her own.